everybody. You're watching Palm Beach Rocks, and I'm your host, Roxana Sella. Today I'm here at Disney's Animal Kingdom, and I'm so excited to bring you one of my favorite shows. We're here with the brand new red carpet event, the premiere of Chimpanzee. Don't go anywhere. Polo Gear is the official sporting goods line for the Sport of Kings, carrying a wide range of products from custom helmets and saddles to everyday sportswear, including a great line of Polo Girl clothing. Polo Gear has everything you need to play the game of polo. Ah, the natives are a little restless here today at Disney World. Why? Because it's the new Disney Nature documentary that's just being launched right here in Orlando. I mean, get ready to swing into action with the new movie, Chimpanzee. You know, you've done so many successful projects that you produced and directed on. How is this one a little different? I just heard you worked four years to put this together. I mean, that would be some real trying experiences in this. I know, you think, well, four years, that's like an animated movie, which it is, but yeah. you think for this year, our, our cinematographers, like Martin, who's out in the field all the time, he might get 30 seconds a day because you're, these animals move, they're trying to find food all the time, and you're catching these little glimpses through heavy underbrush all the time. It's a real challenge, probably the most challenging thing to film out in nature. But in the end, it's a great story and a great film. 25 years ago, I worked on chimpanzees in the Thai forest for television. And I knew then that they were the ultimate animal uh, for, for the big screen. Because the thing about chimpanzees is they are our closest relations in nature. They do so much that we do. So much of their family life, so much of their social life echoes our own life. And they just work brilliantly on the big screen. Hi there. You guys are great on the Disney Channel. What's the message? What do you think you want to say to everybody out there, your fans? I think that it's just really important to realize that we can change the environment and we really can make a difference. We become so aware of how much we're hurting it. Let's be not the generation that was aware, the generation that changed. And it's easy. It's so simple. All you can you can plant a tree, you can recycle, you can turn off your lights when you leave a room. It's so simple, and we can change. And if you need any inspiration, um, see this movie because I it, the landscape of Africa is just beautiful, and that really will inspire you to just say, nature's awesome. Awesome. Let me help <laughs> Not only if you need inspiration, you should just go see the movie anyway. I think Dr. Jane Goodall, what a pleasure to be with you and to talk about your passion, which is the chimpanzee. And of course, who else to work on a project like this but yourself and Disney. Tell us why you wanted to work on this project. I mean, it's it's out there and it's been done. How did Oscar affect you? To be honest, I haven't really worked much on the film. I haven't been to the Ivory Coast. But because my name is so associated with chimpanzees, uh, I realized immediately it was going to help the chimps in the Disney movie. Yes. And they realized that having my name involved would help to promote the film. So Roots and Chooks is now in 130 countries. It's wonderful. We've got 16,000 active groups all ages, from even little preschool groups and right through university and beyond. And every group is choosing three projects mm -hmm. to make the world better. One, to help people, to help animals, to help the environment that we all share. And these kids, along with other wonderful groups that Disney's honoring today, are changing the world. I would like to really know what the commitment is on Disney for conservation and taking care of the planet. Well, it's a significant commitment. It stems back all the way to Walt Disney's days. We really believe that uh, we should behave responsibly as a citizen of the world. And with that comes not only um, how we conduct our business, but uh, what we do to inspire others, uh, particularly children, to uh, have values as it relates to conserving nature and uh, protecting animals and respecting the earth. Chimpanzee. Yeah, this is home. You were made to be ruled. In the end, it will be every man for himself. Hey, 
Peter. Did hey. I start painting like this? Thor. I know. War Horse. It's, and now Marvel Avengers. Yeah, yeah. This is so cool. Yeah, it's amazing. If I had, had an amazing run, truly. And now, you know, when it comes to working with superheroes, which is my favorite thing, one of the characters, of course, is the villain. Someone has to be it, and that was your Somebody job. has to be the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Now, you were really kind of the um, mischievous god. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that part. Well, you know, he's the agent of chaos. He's the, he's the, um, he's the cat that's, that's stirring up the mayhem in this film. And uh, it's fun because, I don't know, you get, to, you get to play a few notes that you don't normally get to play, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, um, there's something released about being a bad guy. Um, but, he, you know, he's Thor's younger brother. He grew up in Thor's shadow. He was always going to be second son. And, and his mischievous, villainous credentials come from this kind of emotional heartbreak, which is why I find him so fascinating. How much of it were you able to put into it of yourself? Were you able to have that opportunity to kind of just you know, let it go? I, I guess so. I mean, I'm, I, hope, I hope I don't want to take over the world. You know what I mean? Like, that's what Loki wants. But there's a, there's a, there's a vulnerability there that I think is really compelling and um, an openness to him. He's raw. He's pure emotion and, and pure emotion when he's enjoying himself, pure emotion when he's feeling spiritually desolate and also pure emotion when he's being terrifying. So there was something kind of massive about extending myself into him, like towards him, to play him. You fought all eight <laughs> superheroes. I only just I, have a few here yeah. to, to go at you with. Who was the most exciting to fight? Can I try these on? Yes. They're okay, just, as long as you okay. and I can share them. Okay. There we go. Like, <laughs> if only Powers. Loki had one of these, because i got to say, when Loki comes into contact with this, this big green hulking fist, Right, the result's not pretty, should we say? No, it wasn't pretty in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, for either of them. Don't want to spoil anything. Too much fun. Now, what are we going to so see? It's so great. Doesn't it make, it makes yeah. you feel really powerful. What kid isn't going to want this? I want this. Are you serious? Yeah, I want two of these. <laughs> I just think it would be fun to walk around and cook a meal. And Tell me, what are we going to expect? Are we going to have a sequel? Is, is Loki coming back? Loki is coming back in Thor 2, for sure. Yeah. We're shooting Thor 2 in the, uh, kind of the late summer, early fall. Um, and uh, so why start in September? And I imagine that um, <laughs> Odin is going to have a few things to say about what, what's happened in Avengers. You know, that would be the starting point. And I, what I'm looking forward to is, is how the relationship between Thor and Loki evolves now as a result of what's happened. Like, you know, is, is there this glimmer of redemption in him? And can that be appealed to? Would he, can he be forgiven? Can he accept forgiveness in his own heart? Well, I love it, and I can't wait to see it. Thank I love this so show. Much. It's sensational. Thank you. It rocks, and so do you. And uh, Bless you, know you. I'll share this with you, too. Fist bump. There you go. Bang. <laughs> Boom. They're going to love it. They're going to love you. OK. <laughs> Thanks. <so much. laughs>you know, I'm so excited to talk about this new film that you've just finished and will be airing soon, which is Magic City, shot right here in South Florida. Good, good. Uh, well, I'm a big fan of South Florida now. You know, I had not spent any time there, so sort of my introduction to being in, in uh, South Florida was the show. And I was lucky enough to kind of go down there a month before we started principal photography and and acclimate and um it was it was fantastic and now that i know i'm going back for season two i'm even more excited uh, now how long did it take you to shoot magic city how long did you work on the project i want to say i was in miami for about six months but like i said for the first month i i kind of went down there just to watch the sets being built because uh uh, the, the sets that our, our production designer, a guy named Carlos Barbosa, built were the most amazing sets that I think have ever been built for a television show. Um, we, uh, 
put up uh, 200,000 square feet of um, a majestic hotel. I mean, I'm talking, you know, marble floors and, and the chandelier hanging in our lobby is the actual chandelier that was hanging in the Eden Rock in 1958. Um, so the, the attention to detail was tremendous and I kind of wanted to be there to see that all happen. Um, and again, just sort of to get the feel for, for, for Miami. Now tell us, you've been on so many other shows. You've worked on Grey's Anatomy, you've worked on Weeds, uh, you've done so many other things in the TV as well as movies. Can you tell us any projects you're working on currently besides of course the launching of Magic City? Well, the launching of Magic City and then gearing up for our second season. Um, I've got I've got a couple movies in the works. I'm probably going to try to do a movie here before we start our second season. And then I've got three or four movies coming out this year. So it's pretty a busy year for me. But I, I think kind of my most important job right now is is uh, is being with uh, my fiance and and my two year old son and and trying to be a good dad. And and so that's. That's what I love doing right now. But, but you know, there's always work. <laughs> well, great. And I guess we'll look forward to Magic City, and we'll look forward to having you here in South Florida in a few more months. When do you All right. I'll see you soon, Rox. It sounds like a hell of a lot of fun. Come on out for the Tea Time Golf Classic. May 18th at Frenchman's Reserve to benefit the South Florida Coalition Against Substance Abuse. I'll be there for this wonderful event with one of my good friends and world-famous performance artist, Michael Israel. Call this number or go online today. See you on the green. Hi, Roxana. Hi, Rob. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Thank you. Good to be with you. So today's interview is a little different than what my viewers might be used to. We know you as an amazing actor, having done several movies, and of course, some of our favorite TV series like The West Wing, Brothers and Sisters, Family Guy. I mean, I could go on and on. But today, we're here to talk about California. Yeah, well, California has, has given me everything. I, I, I came out to California as a 13-year-old as a kid who wanted to be an actor, and, and it all happened for me, and it happened for me in California. I've raised my family there. Um, I owe it everything. So to be able to, to be a spokesman uh, for California uh, is an honor and, and, and a good way for me to give back to a state that not only has given me so much, but has so much to offer people who maybe haven't been as blessed as I have to be able to come out and be a part of it. Well, you certainly are a great spokesperson, Rob. What do you think you love most about living in the Golden State? What really inspires you? Well, I think it actually is the inspiration that I get from being here. Um, whether it's being in the ocean and, and being surrounded by nature, which I can do on a daily basis, year round. Um, I can be skiing, I can be in the mountains, I can be on hikes, I can, I can be playing golf. I can, I can be outdoors doing something healthy 24 seven if I wanted to. But there's really just an energy here in California. Um, the people, the creativity, the forward thinkingness uh, that is emblematic of California culture that the world recognizes. Um, it, everybody knows it, but to be able to come here and experience it is, is, something, is something else. And, and so that's really what, what I'm, I'm having a great time reaching out to people and, and having them think about visiting California because tourism is a huge thing for our state's economy, huge. It's, it's, it's 900,000 jobs in California alone. Now, Rob, do you play polo or do you go to polo? You know what, I have many, I actually have many, many, many friends who play polo. And I know knowing me, first of all, I can't afford it. <laughs> Se second of all, I would be so obsessed with it that you would lose me forever in acting and I would just be a polo bum. So I've, I've, I've consciously avoided it because all of my friends who do play it are, are so obsessed with it and, and love it so much. And I know that you're, you're there in the Santa Barbara where I live and where you are are the two great meccas in, in the country. It is in fact a lot of my dear friends from the Wellington area. They have the Piaget and the Audi Polo teams, Melissa and Mark Ganzi. And I really think, Rob, that we should become sister cities. I, I think this is, see, look, we're, 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 we're community building right here, right before our, everybody's very eyes. It's really true. 
<laughs> because polo is such a sport of kings and as a spectator it's so much fun and I sponsor a polo team here during the season and it really would be fun to put the two sisters together. Wow that's amazing it's you know Cal I mean Santa Barbara hosts uh, many 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 huge polo events we just had um, uh, the, the Prince of England and, and, and Kate Middleton out here uh, for a polo event that I was able to go to and you know, again, just a, nor a normal day in California. Oh, yes, Miss Middleton, how are you? You're looking dapper today. <laughs> well, in fact, they played against my friend Melissa. I know they did, and my friend Andy Bush. Yeah, no, it's, I, we, we know all the same crowd out there. So you have to tell me, what else are you working on? Well, we're back on my, my show, Parks and Recreation. Our little show uh, on NBC returns uh, at the end of the month to finish out the year. Um, with some really cool, really funny, really funny episodes. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. On the West Wing, I was, I was fortunate to be on one of the great reviewed dramas. And now on Parks and Rec, I, I, I'm fortunate enough to be on one of the great reviewed um, comedies. And, and that's kind of a cool thing to be able to have been on both sides of, of that kind of um, acclaim and I'm, I'm just happy that people seem to like the show as much as they do. There's, there's so much of the, of the natural beauty in California and that's what really attracts me. You could go through three lifetimes and never take advantage of all of it. Wellington grown over the last three years with GPL. I will tell you something, this should have happened a number of years ago, but I am so thankful to this organization and Mason Phelps for bringing this to Wellington. It's sold out and people are coming together from, from everywhere and this is what Wellington is all about. You're right, you know I was on um, interviewing Rob Lowe the other day and I was telling him we were doing this. I said, you know what, you've got so much polo there and we have so much going on oh here. Let's goodness. become sister city. Absolutely. And, and he said, you know what, I'm coming down and we're going to do that. Yeah, so, you know, that. Santa Barbara and Wellington, here we go. My third year and you know what, we're sold out again. We are, can you believe it? 68 tailgate spaces all the way around the ring. And I gather you got into the finals this year. Yeah. So you know, far, so good. I, 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 I wanted to make room for you, so I bowed out this year and left my team at home. We are the judges for the tailgate contest. I hope you come with us for a little bit of it, because um, I think it's going to be about the overall effort and how all these little bit of ideas work together. Welcome to Gay Parade. But I gotta ask you, how are you keeping the ball up? Or shouldn't I ask? <laughs> the same way we do. <laughs> oh my god. I didn't bring any money, but I'll be back. You coming to GPL? Even when you're trashy, you gotta be a little classy. Check out those jello shots right there. <gasps> Cakes by Sarah from Lake Worth. Well, we're the Human Rights Campaign, mm -hmm. which is the HRC, and we fight for uh, gay rights and equality. Well, obviously we're Titanic, and mm -hmm. today's the 100th anniversary yes. of the Titanic sinking. Not something to celebrate, but we thought it was worth remembering. This is a Cosmopolitan, which we're not sure they're on the Titanic. And it has, and it has a white star line on the logo right there. Oh, I love it. Cheers, guys. Here's Cheers. to 100 years on the Titanic. Absolutely. I'm glad I wasn't there because I'd be really old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to do that. Uh, we've been working on it for like a month. A month. Your yeah, theme just is, having a good time. Your theme is so much fun. Well, it's all about gay and fun and polo. Thanks, Thank guys. You for that. We appreciate. Oh, it. are you kidding? I love this. Great job. Great we job. have fun. <laughs> Tantiki, what are we serving? Uh, so we have a Katai. Lots of drinks. Who's gonna win? Oh, we are. We are. Yay! <laughs> It's halftime, you know what that means? Look out, divot stops. Oh, 
aka our international dressage rider. Yes. What do you think about the polo game today? I love polo games. Look <laughs> at this. Yeah, yeah it's this fun. is so yeah. much fun. Yeah, Isn't it? It's so, so different, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Black or This is great. Look at the crowd that's here. We have double the people last year, and everyone's excited to be here. It's a beautiful day. The horses are great. The fields are great. I mean, this is great polo. On any level, this is great polo. And that's what makes it exciting. And uh, we're really, really happy that they've chosen to come back here. And we hope this is the, the home of GPL for many years to come. would like look this glamorous? Never. I, I think, and every year the event exceeds my expectations and it just gets better and better. Good game. I think that we're running a lot and that was a fuss. I think that the game is improving every year so I'm very happy about it. Hey Roxana, how's it going? Hey Maggie, thanks for being on Palm Beach Rocks. Well, thanks for having me. Now, you are one of the new hot Hollywood actresses. I, <laughs> I mean, you have been in so many movies, like one of my faves, Taken, and the amazing TV series Lost. Now, how did you get into the industry? What was your big break? Um, gosh, you know, I, I kind of, I like to think of it like working my way up in, in any industry. I, I definitely worked my way up in television and uh, guest stars and TV movies and that kind of thing. But I would say probably Lost was the most recognizable when I was 20, so um, that was pretty exciting in, a, in an entirely different kind of way, in a global way. Certainly, it, it really is. You know, uh, I have seen some of the previews on Lockout, and your character, Emily, I mean, that it's very intense. Yeah, it, it is. Um, you know, there are kind of shades of a dystopian future, but... I think more than anything, what really drew me to it was the humor. I mean, it's so fun. It's unabashedly entertaining, and, and I like that in an action movie. You know, it, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Oh, sure, and of course, you're working with some of the same producers as in Taken. So how did that work for you? Yeah, I've done three films with them now. I love working with them. They're, they're really, really lovely. So now, in this film, did you guys really kind of rough it out a little bit? Did I, did I hear some stories that maybe Hollywood style, of course, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, we, we definitely kind of learned to hold our own. We had a little combat training on the ground in Belgrade when we got there, so that was fun. And, um, you know, for the most part, no major injuries. We all hung in there and, and had a great time. Um, I did accidentally hit Guy once. <laughs> but <laughs> that came up last night in a Q&A. I was like, I knew he was going to remember, and in front of lots and lots of people. <laughs> Yeah, but he was pretty graceful about it. I, I don't know, I just slipped. I can't explain it. But, you know, luckily um, luckily my strength isn't at the point yet where I, you know, broke anything. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, that's very good. Now, what else do we have to look forward to? I have uh, a little indie called Decoding Annie Parker and then Taken 2 in, uh, in October, October 5th. We just wrapped that. And then uh, Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2 in November. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Cheers. Thank you. Don't worry. It's perfectly safe. <laughs> the simple thank you is enough. <laughs> Ruxworld.tv has just launched, and it isn't just a website. It's a full-fledged network consisting of over seven channels and an online editorial calendar magazine, reaching billions globally. 
There's all the great celebrities, recipes, and fun interviews you've loved over the past eight years, and more. And if this isn't enough, watch for our new dynamic way of shopping online. It's the Lux lifestyle we all love. Not just for the rich and famous, but for the world. As in, RuxWorld.tv. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. And remember, Palm Beach, keep rocking because the world is watching. And so are the animals. Do you want me at the same beat? Uh, I guess so. <laughs> All right. What? 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 Anytime okay. Now. Ready? So, we're at the premier of chimpanzee. Hey, helping the environment is easy. Come on, everybody. You can do it. We don't need to have to say that you can help the environment any day. Come on. What? What? I believe in you. What? That is true. Um, hey everybody at Palm Beach Rocks. Um, I'm Tom Hiddleston. I play Loki in The Avengers. It's coming out on May 4, and I really hope you like it. Hey Palm Beach Rocks, thanks for watching. Hey, well, hey uh, West Palm Beach, thanks for watching West Palm Beach Rocks, and um, we'll see you real soon. Yeah, Palm Beach Rocks. Shalim Scott wants you guys to know I love you. Rocks. I'm with it, I'm with it, I'm with it, I'll beat it. I'm your host, Roxana Sella, and I've got an exciting show for you today. We're here at Disney's Animal Kingdom to bring you the brand new World... <laughs>